Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. I have a stash busting video for you today. This is the Memory Lane Collection. It was a special, close to my heart, brought out not that long ago, but I love the florals and all of the pretty spring colors in this collection. I still have quite a few of the stickers left, and then of course a whole bunch of scraps I will try to incorporate in today's layout. I have five photos printed in varied sizes. This is a three by three. I've got some three by fours and then a four by six. We were at a scrapbooking retreat in Oakhurst, California, and it was a beautiful setting. There was this gorgeous pond and lots of wildlife cruising around the grounds. It was just really a relaxing weekend. Let me clear these out of the way and grab my Versa mats. This is going to be a double page layout. So I've got both of my mats here. And then to build this layout, I am starting with a couple sheets of Seabrook cardstock. You can see there's a lighter side and a darker side. I am going to use the lighter side. I've cut several strips of paper here. This pattern, I think I'm gonna use this side. This is nine and a half by five and a half. And this one is 10 and a half by five and a half. I've cut a couple strips of the floral pattern here. So this one is 10 and a half by three inches. And this one here is nine and a half by three inches. And then the yellow strip is one and a half inches wide. This is a full 12 inches. I'm gonna dovetail the end and I'm not sure how long I want these extended. So for now they're the full 12 inches. My sister Anna came over to Scrapbook and I was looking through her album and fell in love with this layout. So that is where the inspiration for this is coming from. I'm totally scrap lifting her. She used different papers and she learned her layout from Jana Eubank from a class she took. So I am changing it somewhat. I'm not following the measurements exactly. I do have these yellow zip strips and I might run those across the center here, but this is my main focal photo and then I'm going to put Put this little three by four of the conference center on the right and then I'm going to arrange these kind of like this and I am following very closely as far as embellishments and photo placement goes to Anna's layout so this one here is a true four by six I'm wearing blue and there's blue in the other photos and actually blue in this memory lane pattern paper. So I'm going to be bringing in some pops of sapphire just to add some depth to this color palette here. So I'm wondering if this will look good actually matted on sapphire to kind of bring it all together. And I do like that. So I'm gonna trim these papers down here. So what I did is gut that sapphire. Let me adhere that to my Versamat here. It's much easier if you tack these down. It is really helpful to have everything stay exactly in place so you can use those measurements. And then when you gut out the center like this, it becomes very flimsy. So I do recommend you secure it to your mat and then everything will line up nicely. I've trimmed the Seabrook cardstock down to have a quarter inch showing of that sapphire paper around the top, outer edge, and bottom, but they'll be connected in the middle to give the appearance of one 12 by 24 size layout. I gave you all the measurements for what I trim these to, but I do like to overlap my layers just a bit, so the actual amount showing might be varied just slightly. I'm rounding the corners of the outside edge because Anna's layout had rounded corners, and sometimes it's fun to switch it up. I know some of you are not a fan of rounded corners, so you can just leave those uh, squared off. I have created several similar layouts with papers arranged in this manner, but the embellishments are what really drew me into her layout and had me inspired to scrap lift it. So stay tuned to see what I bring in for embellishments and hopefully you will like it too. Whenever I use these lighter kind of springy colors, I like to use a softer charcoal rather than black to ink up the edges. So I'll just go ahead and do a little bit of this and then get the rest done off camera. I do my best to attend several scrapbooking retreats every year. They're so much fun to share this hobby with like-minded crafters. And oftentimes you don't have to cook or clean or do anything but scrapbook. So I just love them. For my embellishments, I turn to the sticker sheet. This says living in the moment. I pop that up on foam tape and then of course I cut a tag. So we're gonna create a little cluster up here above our main focal photo. 
From my stash, I grabbed the Doodled Floral Stamp Set, and I picked this one because it kind of mimics the flowers in the pattern paper. It has the same kind of look to it. So we are going to create some embellishments with these images here. And these are outline stamps, so I am going to be coloring these in with my Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers. So I'm going to use those two and just stamp a whole bunch using my Misty. So we'll add a little piece of white paper, and then I can arrange these. I'll do a couple on camera, but then I'll make more off uh, camera so you don't have to watch the process over and over again. I do have a lot of floral stamps and I know that they are quite common and some of us are like, oh yay, another floral, while others are like, oh, another floral. But it is nice to have different styles. This is a more whimsical kind of doodle type look. And then of course I have more realistic flowers and you know, it's nice to have a variety depending on what you're scrapbooking. So for my markers, I chose, I've got uh, coral shades and blends and then the pale pink blends. I'll bring in some light yellow and then dull green as well. Those are all colors that look great with my paper uh, palette over here. Wherever there's a shadow, I'm using the darker image. So around the center and then of course around the edge of the petals. So the edge of the petal would be casting a shadow on the petals below. So that is where I'm using the darkest color of this uh, coral here. And then we'll go in with the lighter shades and just kind of fill that in. It's a small image, so it's kind of hard to get a lot of shading, but you can just work back and forth blending until you are happy with the result. The blends are the lighter three versions of the color, and then the shades are the darker three versions. So I'm just kind of switching back and forth between the two markers to get the effect that I'm going for. Now this is the pink shades, and I'm concentrating the darker colors towards the center of the flowers, and then going lighter as the petals reach towards the tips. I am leaving the centers white because I plan to add a yellow enamel dot for a little bit of texture. Otherwise, you can just color those. So I'll go ahead and get those die cut out. I also cut a whole bunch of leaves using this slimline die set here from Sage Cardstock. Let me bring this back into frame here. We will create an embellishment cluster over here on the left lower corner. So I'm gonna just lay out a few floral images. Then over here on the right to draw your eye all the way across the layout. And then of course we'll add some flowers to the top section as well. I'm starting with the flowers because they are the largest images and then we can tuck the leaves in as we go. I'm just dry fitting everything for now to get a feel for how I want everything positioned. It's kind of funny because my sister Anna, whose layout I'm scrap lifting, she scrapbooked the same photos. So not only am I scrap lifting the design, but the photos also because Anna is in the picture and was at the retreat with me. So it made this layout come together so quickly. I didn't have to think about anything. Anna's layout had the flowers, but she also had some like kind of, you know, sprig type flowers. And I want to bring in yellow to these embellishment clusters. So I went back to my stamp collection and found this one here. And these flowers are perfect. So they have that kind of like, you know, sprig type look. I'm going to tuck a few of these in. And it also, you know, brings that little pop of yellow because I colored it in with my yellow marker here. I want to add some flowers up here. So let's tuck that little guy in and see how that looks. I grabbed this mix-in paper collection and this stripe paper has all of the exact same colors that are in the memory lane collection so I thought hmm this might be good. So rather than the yellow gingham paper I cut a couple strips. These are half inch and this is going to help bring in that sapphire color and I think it pops a little bit more. The yellow against the yellow just it looked okay, but it wasn't really what I was wanting. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little matching dovetail in this one here, and then I will cut it so that it extends slightly longer than the yellow strip. So it's gonna end up being about 11 and three quarter inches long. I am intentionally bringing in a lot of nature themed embellishments to document this memory because even though we were crafting and indoors a lot, a big part of the weekend was how beautiful the setting was and it just all of the nature that was around us. So I definitely want to incorporate that into the 
scrapbook layout because it's part of the memory and the story. I cut a circle here and then I have an outline. I want to bring that blue over to the right hand side. I am going to add a little bit of journaling to this circle here. I think we are ready to bring in the rest of the embellishments. Let me get these little guys back in here. For my title, I turned to my Cricut and I created this along with some clouds and this little sun here. The sun and the title I did print and cut. The title is, the, the word memories is from the uh, Close to My Heart collection called Storybook. And the sun is from one of the digital art bundles. And it says best day and then the sun. So I just isolated the sun. Now we want to use a little of the pattern paper here up at the top. So I'm going to put a little banner dovetail in this with the decorative shapes dies. This has a little stitching detail on the end. And then I have a sticker that says simple life. And again, I'm just trying to bring in more of the blue color. I did even more stash busting and dug out an old punch I have and punched out some of these flowers from the periwinkle color. Periwinkle is kind of like a lighter version of sapphire. It has a little bit more purple in it, but I feel like it still goes. It is a coordinating color in this workshop or in this paper collection. So let me just tuck a couple of these tiny leaves in here and I am liking the way that is looking. I just realized this is going to be my very last video as a close to my heart maker. Gosh, that's just so weird. But I am going to continue sharing on my channel. So there will be lots of inspiration and I'll be doing stash busting videos like this and there'll be some new product coming in also. So I'm cut a little flower here to finish these little flower centers off. And let me get these attached down. But yeah, I just want to say how much I appreciate each and every one of you. I know many of you have been getting in those last orders in April to make sure that I benefit from that. And I'm very grateful. This is a little bird. I have a couple bird stamps. This one's super old. It still has a little button on there. But I want to add a little bird. Again, totally inspired by Anna's layout, which had a cute little bird here. So I'm just holding these up to see which one is going to be a better size. And I think I want to use this one here. I'm holding this up to see if the periwinkle is going to look good, and I think it will. And let's go ahead and stamp this in periwinkle. One thing about stamping is if you don't like it, flip the paper over and try a different color on the other side. So I'm going to ink this up a couple times so we get a really good impression and we can see all of that beautiful detail inside of the bird there. I did fussy cut this out. This was back before dyes were even a thing. So it does not have coordinating dies. I don't know what the name of this stamp set is. It's actually not on the package, which is strange. It's been around a long time. So I like that the little bird is looking into my main focal photo there. And then I did cut a periwinkle tag just to carry that color up top. And we'll just, let me lift that up with my little Cricut tool, tuck that in. And now some of these flowers are hidden. So I'm actually going to cut these off and then I can use them to kind of sprinkle elsewhere on the layout. There's no sense in hiding those. Actually, this one's hidden too. I'm going to cut off the bottom here and that'll make it easier to tuck in. And then we'll just grab this little flower and then tuck the, this little cluster in up top. I printed out all my journaling on Avery Clear sticker paper. So I used a document on my Mac computer and pages. And then instead of a text box, you can use shapes. So I used a circle and sized it to fit my circle here. And I'm just gonna peel this off. I could have printed it out on white cardstock first and then just die cut a circle, but I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. So the sticker is going to work well for now. This is actually a shaker window set. So that's why we have this little outline here. And it's, you know, a shaker to make like shaker cards and whatnot, but it works great for journaling also. So I'm just gonna line this up and finish this little circle off there. And then I have even more journaling to add. Before I add the journaling, I am going to add a little bit of the Seabrook ink around the edge of my clouds just to give them a little bit of interest. So I've got my blending brush and we will just put a very light, you know, color shadow around the outside of the cloud. And again, I am going to be adding some journaling to these. So instead of using like a circle or a text box, well, I did use a circle, but I turned it into an oval and that way it fit, it will fit nicely in the center of my clouds. I do have a couple journaling tip videos where I show how to use 
use a text box, size it, add your te uh, text and print it out. So I will leave those listed in the description box below. I don't show using a circle or, you know, making it an oval, but it is the same process. If you have cloud shaped dies, you could very easily, as I suggested with the circle, print your journaling out onto regular cardstock and then position your die over the journaling and run it through your die cutting machine. But these were Cricut cuts, so that would be very difficult to line up your Cricut cut with your printed journaling. So what I'm doing is just cutting around the edge. I'm sorry, I'm off camera just a little bit, but I'm cutting that sticker paper so it's the same footprint as my cloud. I just thought the idea was so cute to put the journaling on the cloud. So if you have a big story to tell, this is an idea that you might want to incorporate where you kind of carry the story across the layout. So they're just kind of little bits of memory from uh, the weekend. One of them just talks about how the retreat was hosted by fellow maker Jen Patrick, and it was our first time attending, and we're definitely going to go back. And then on another little journaling block, I talked about who was there with me and what I was working on. On. I was working on my Maui uh, trip while here and I was using the Dreammaker papers collection. So that was kind of a fun little memory. And then in the circle, I talked about the actual retreat uh, location and just our experience while we were there. This little notebook page is from a recent stamp of the month and I did use the sticker paper to add the journaling and for on here the journaling is the name of the scrapbooking retreat, the date, and the name of the conference center. So kind of like the little main bullet points of information there. And I just think it's really fun to kind of spread the story out in different journaling spots. I added a few bits of twine to my tag toppers and I have the yellow enamel dots in the center of my flowers there. Let me hold this up so you can see how everything turned out. Isn't that cute? All the supplies that I can link, I will have listed in the description box below so you can look there. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Here's a link to that journaling tips video. If you have not caught that yet, you definitely want to check that out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week here on YouTube. Bye.